Good morning. On this another day of grace, let's just begin with a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are pleased to again come into your presence in and through that name that makes it possible, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come not through any worth of ourself, but we come in that fear and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love him because of what he has done for us in Calvary. We fear him for those who are still outside the kingdom of God. They should fear him because if they do not know him as saviour, they will meet him as judge. So we just pray today, Lord, and this day of grace, this day of opportunities, this day of again being able to hear the word of God, this day when sinners can be found of Christ, when saints can have the great assurance, no man can pluck us from his hand, and you and the Father are one. In the name of Jesus, we just give you thanks for this new day and for truly knowing that our times are in your hands. And as one of old said, we wish them there. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our reading this morning is found in Mark's Gospel. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him, fell on his knees before him, Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not defraud. Honour your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is either easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. You know, this is one of the very well-known stories of Jesus and people he meets. This young man who is just called a man here, but when you look at the other Gospels, you find he's a young man, he's rich, and he's a ruler. In the world's eyes, he's got everything going for him. And yet something has changed in this young man's life. He has seen or heard something over these three years of Jesus' ministry. Whether he was one of those in the house when Jesus had the paralytic lord at his feet, whether he was on the mountain hill side when Jesus was preaching the gospel, whether he was, you know, just walking with the crowd somewhere, whether he was one of the great masses of people that Jesus spoke to many times, whether he was just an individual with some other rulers of the country sitting in a house with Jesus. There are many instances of that in the scriptures. But somewhere along his life, I believe he met Jesus. He heard him, and now he knew he had a need, and that need was for eternal life. So he does what you would never find a ruler in Israel doing. He runs towards this itinerant preacher, no qualifications. He's not a member of the Roman class. In fact, his background is he's a carpenter. He runs to him, and instead of being like a normal ruler and looking him straight in the face, he falls at his feet and asks, Good teacher, what must I do to receive and inherit eternal life? Jesus looks at him and says, Why do you call me good? Because there's no one good but God alone. And maybe this young man himself thought he was good. Because when Jesus then further asks him about the commandments, he can say, all these I have kept 
since my youth. He can say he has kept all of the last six commandments that Jesus has said. The love thy neighbour commandments, he has kept them all. And you think when you read those words, Jesus loved him. This man is going for the kingdom. This man is going to be saved. This man is going to find salvation in Christ. He's so close. And yet Jesus tells him, sell all that you have, give to the poor and come follow me. And for being so close, it suddenly ends up he's lost. He walks away sad. And yet Jesus had saw something in him that the young man hadn't seen. When he came to Jesus, he said, what must I do not to get eternal life, but to inherit? It was part of him thought he was entitled to eternal life. No one's entitled to eternal life. You have to seek Christ, find Christ and ask Christ. But for some reason, this young ruler thought he was entitled to it. An inheritance is something you get because you're entitled to it. He wasn't entitled as none of us are to eternal life. We have to ask to receive. And then we find, you know, that this young man is asked to do something. Part with his riches. And here Jesus has hit the nail on the head. This young rich ruler has something before God. You notice Jesus didn't ask him the first four commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt make unto me any great image. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But these are the ones he didn't keep. His riches came before God. He had another God. Oh, he was good to his neighbours, but he fell far short of God. And you know, there are many people today and they're good for good deeds. If good deeds would get you into heaven, you'd be filled with people who had done them. But God doesn't work like that. Heaven is open to the whosoever. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the good shepherd. It is Jesus and him alone that makes a difference in our lives. For you who know him, praise and thank him today for what he has done for you. Remember as you walk through this day to praise him for the night that's passed into eternity. Thank him for every meal you have today, for every opportunity you have, for family, for friends. It may be a phone call. It might be using a, a laptop. Maybe using some of the other facilities that are there just to keep in touch. But thank him for those. And thank him for a family that cares for you. At the same time, let us all remember those who today do not know the Lord. Those who will live this day as if there's a tomorrow and a next day and a next day. The truth of the matter is that we live one day at a time. And for those who hopefully are listening this morning who do not know you, I pray in this day of grace, this day of mercy, eyes might be opened, hearts might be belted, and that those who began this day outside the kingdom may close their eyes tonight, being children of God. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we so often take grace and mercy as something we deserve, something we need. The truth of the matter is it's a gift from God. And so frequently don't we accept gifts and never say thanks. Frequently we are given things, we have things and we forget to just say thank you for them. So for we who know your name, who love you, we just pray this morning that we may be thankful. A thankful people who praise you in whatever way we can this day. We may be in our homes and not able to get out. But sure it's as good a place as any to praise the Lord for what we have. And for those, Lord, who maybe are still outside the kingdom, we pray for them that this might be a day when what that young man didn't find, that they may find. Not something they'd inherited, but something freely given by Christ and Calvary to the whosoever believeth. So, Lord, we leave this day in your hands and we're mindful in this COVID-19 virus that 
There are many throughout our land who today have an empty chair and a silent voice. We pray that that peace that only you can give might be theirs. We pray, Lord, you'll be a comforter to them when, because of the shut-in situation, they cannot get the comfort and love they would normally find in a normal day. So for all those 800 plus who last night and yesterday lost a loved one, will you draw near unto them? Will you let them know that the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is a God who cares? May they know the love of God in such a fashion that they may come to love him as he loves them. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen.